On this week's XJ Talk Show, two years after the big recall, Jeep has fixed only a fraction of the Grand Cherokees and Liberties it's supposed to. And we hear a story of a Virginia woman who jumps from a Jeep and causes a crash. YouTube love is liberally spread around. We troubleshoot Bubba's no start issue. And Cody from Trailchasers.net calls in and explains the new Cherokee for us. Jeep Mama lists the 10 must-have accessories for any Jeep mom. She reviews the Drake off-road four-wheel drive shifter knob. Tony shares some interesting YouTube comments and we cover some upcoming off-road events and more on the next XJ Talk Show. You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network podcast. The XJ Talk Show is for entertainment purposes only. Any advice or information provided on this show should be verified by alternative sources prior to making any changes or modifications to your vehicle. We are not experts, just people that enjoy the Jeep hobby and don't mind talking endlessly about it. P.S. We love you. Hey, stud. It's time for the XJ Talk Show. Now, here's my two favorite boys, Tony and Josh. (laughs) And Tammy. (laughs) First week in G. Well, two years after the recall, Jeep fixes only a fraction of the affected Grand Cherokees and Liberties in that massive recall. On April 2nd, 2015, a Georgia jury awarded $150 million to the family of Remington Remy Walden, a four-year-old boy killed when a Jeep Grand Cherokee exploded into flames three years ago after being rear-ended. Nearly two years after the after agreeing to recall 1.56 million older Jeeps that could catch fire in rear-end crashes, Fiat Chrysler U.S. has repaired only 4% of the Grand Cherokees and 27% of the liberties covered by the recall. This is all according to documents filed with the federal safety regulators. The repair rate is far below the average of 75% within a year and a half after the recall is announced, and it could set up another confrontation between Chrysler. Safety advocates have called the size of the recall and the fix inadequate. Tests by the NHTSA, or the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, showed the hitches helped in low-speed crashes of around 40 miles per hour or less, but are really have no help in higher speed crashes. I personally say, unless you have a full cage and are set up like Mad Max, chances are if you get hit from behind by a vehicle traveling at freeway speed, location of the gas tank is going to be the least of your concerns. Woman jumps from a Jeep on I-264 and causes a big old crash. The woman jumped out of a moving vehicle on Interstate 264, the major freeway running from Norfolk to Virginia Beach Wednesday morning, causing a multi-vehicle crash. Virginia State Police said Jasmine Kerbison 27, was charged with reckless driving related to failing to maintain proper control of a vehicle. This is all according to the state police. She lives in the 2100 block of Carnaby Drive in Virginia Beach. Kerbison was heading west around 6.40 a.m., driving about 35 miles per hour when she tried to slow down and her brakes malfunctioned. Kerbison jumped out onto the interstate near Whittock Road. A person driving a Honda minivan swerved to avoid her and hit the still-moving Jeep. Ultimately, ultimately leading to a series of crashes involving three other cars. Four people sustained minor injuries and were taken to a hospital. Look, here's a quick tip for you guys. If your Jeeps fail, if your Jeeps, if your brakes fail in your Jeep and you're on the freeway or on the trail or something like that, or like that, um, the thing not to do would be to jump out into traffic. Uh, no, you know, run your vehicle up, up against the wall, um, put it into the grass, grab, drive it up against the barrier, you know, anything like that. Jumping out of a moving vehicle on the freeway, never a good idea, folks. I think uh, this uh, Miss Kerbison wins the Darwin Award for this year. Hey, big thanks to all of you who continue to help out by submitting stories to This Week in Jeep. You got something you think we should report on, or you have a response to any one of our stories here on This Week in Jeep, by all means, please send us a news tip to or send us an email to news tips at xjtalkshow.com. Yeah, we actually got the email forwarding thing working. So whenever you send us a, a, an email to news tips at uh, xjtalkshow.com, it goes to Tammy, Josh, and myself. So if you're from China and you're trying to sell us LED lights, we'll receive that email, all three of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you guys have actually been doing a really good job. So keep up the great work. I really appreciate all the help. So I got to ask, Josh. Uh, yeah. I've, the only time I've ever seen anybody jump out of a, a moving vehicle was in one of those videos where the whole street was frozen and the car is sliding down oh. the down the the slight grade and people would actually bail out the sides of the vehicle and I thought to myself I mean it was maybe going five ten miles an hour but still why in the world would you leave the the relative safety of your vehicle 
to get out of it and perhaps get run over or sm- smash between vehicles. Exactly. Just, You're just putting yourself in so much harm's way. I mean, and we're talking 35 miles per hour. I mean, she was not, on an interstate, but she was only traveling 35 miles per hour. Granted, that's not really all that fast, but nonetheless, I wouldn't want to jump out of a vehicle at 35 miles per hour. Uh, in any case, really, regardless no. of what I'm jumping into, you know, you're, you're much safer in the vehicle, even at those speeds, you know, you put on your seatbelt, you hold on tight <laughs> and you just do your best to try and slow the vehicle down. The vehicle's probably, if you lose your brakes like that, um, you know, grab the e-brake of all things, yeah, you know, use that table actuated. Thinking, why didn't she pull up the brake? Downshift. Yeah, brake. Yeah. Downshift. Exactly. Exactly. A transmission, you know, throwing it in the park or something like that. You know, I mean, there, there's ways to, you know, reduce the vehicle speed and get you out of harm's way versus just bailing ship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think uh, that, that was the worst thing she could have done. Uh, and, and I think a lot of people don't realize that your vehicle is mo- most likely not going to roll over. So you can even uh, mm-hmm. pull hard to the side and, and you yeah. know, like the Starsky and Hutch slide. It, yeah. That's not a new enough reference, is it? Who who else does the slides? <laughs> well, let's just call it drifting or something like drifting. that. Drifting. Yeah, it's not it just, slide. It's drifting, isn't it? That's, that's what my what kids say all nowadays. the time. Drifting. There you go. I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad I got some younger uh, co-hosts. Well, yeah. Let's let's get some videos posted up to our YouTube channel, guys, or something. Let's uh, let's see some of those jeeps drifting on the freeway. That'd be great. <laughs> no, don't do that. Seriously. No, I, actually, I did see uh, see a Cherokee flip because he was doing drifting. That was about five oh, years ago. Man. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, a there's red been one. A, there's. There's, in the last year, there has been two Cherokee rollover accidents on uh, on the freeways out here in my area, uh, at least within you know close area to me. Uh, neither one was uh, was really all that pretty, uh, and I n- n- there was no injuries or deaths. I'm sure there was some minor bumps and bruises, but mm-hmm. nobody lost their life, thank goodness. Uh, but yeah, nonetheless, I, you know, there's been a couple of rollover accidents here. Mm, XJTalk.com is where you go when you're not off road. And now you can go to xjtalk.com when you're off-road too. Using your smartphone, install the Tap a Talk app, then search for XJ Talk. Take XJ Talk with you wherever you go. Jury duty, dinner with your spouse's parents, even, well, anywhere you need your XJ Talk fix. We welcome and look forward to your questions and comments. Dial 530-675-4102 and leave your message on our 24 by 7 voicemail. How would you like to be a guest on the XJ Talk Show? Do you have an interesting story about your Jeep? Maybe an off-road adventure? Perhaps you're a vendor and want to get the word out about your great products. Send us an email to interviews at xjtalk.com or call and leave a voice or text message at 530-675-4102. We look forward to hearing from you. Hey guys, coming up in just a few minutes, my top 10 list of must-have Jeep accessories for the Jeep Wrangler mom. Ooh, excellent. Looking forward to that. Yeah, absolutely. So, hey guys, I want to tell you about the 4x4 Radio Network. Uh, The XG Talk Show and the 4x4 Podcast joined forces and created a network. Yes, we did. Well, (laughs) we'll be adding more shows to the lineup soon. In fact, we're going to be having a call with somebody this coming Monday. It got rescheduled, Josh. Anyway, uh, Mm -hmm. you can visit the 4x4RadioNetwork.com and listen to two great podcasts by simply pressing the play button. There's no better place to get all your 4x4 information. That's the 4x4 Radio Network, www.4x4radionetwork.com. You actually got the link in there this time. I corrected hey. it. I corrected it in the show notes. <laughs> and that's Yeah, it. guys, great website. You want to check it out. Uh, no better place, just like he said, no better place to get all your 4x4 information. A lot of podcasts there already have a nice little uh, section of podcasts all set up for you guys and more to come. So please, if you haven't bookmarked that site yet, it's a good chance to do it. Good time to do it right now. Uh, www.4x4radionetwork.com. Absolutely. Hey, we want to take a moment here to introduce ourselves. Uh, you guys know me as Tony, and uh, uh, some of you know me as the uh, douchey driver uh, that uh, let somebody <laughs> run into me uh, on the freeway. by uh, They signaled and uh, changed lanes into me, and I should have uh, reacted quicker and uh, done a lot better. But but more about that when we get to the uh, campfire side chat. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I'll be looking forward to that as well. Uh, you guys know me as Josh or NW99XJ on all the Jeep forums around the web. Uh, it's a great place to go, guys. We're talking about the XJTalk.com website. It's why we're here. We're here to support that site as well, but also to really get you guys in touch with the uh, well, the funner side of owning a Jeep. We bring you guys some entertainment. We bring you guys some tech and info. Uh, the XJ Talk Show is here to do that and more. We do this every week, guys, and uh, well, every Thursday, 10 p.m. Central, you can join us. Watch the live show over at xjtalkshow.com. You can also join in on the chat room, live chat there, interact with other guests, other fans, and of course, members of the show as well. So by all means, uh, join in on the fun every Thursday, 10 p.m. Central at xjtalkshow.com. And I'm Tammy, and some of you know me as Jeep Mama. And you can also check out my blog at www.jeepmama.com where I post up different fun, interesting things that I do with my Jeep on a weekly basis. So check it out. Oh, she posts a lot of things. It's fun going over Mm -hmm. and looking at the pictures too. Uh, She's already done the clay bar thing that uh, I've been wanting to do to my Jeep. And she's got a brand new Jeep. That Jeep's not even, what, six months old yet, uh, Tammy, and you're clay barring it? Yeah, I know. Pretty bad, huh? No, it's not bad at all. I just, uh, I, I just think that I should have done mine before now. But uh, I'm yeah, glad- everyone's giving me grief because it's like Jeeps are supposed to be dirty. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I like mine clean and shiny. So there you go. Not everybody's that way. Well, let's get over to our voicemails. We've got a a couple, and uh, <clears throat> you know, Josh, Tammy, I got a little concerned because I went and looked at our voicemails, and there was only one voicemail, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. and it wasn't from Nikki G. <gasps> no. no. That's sad. It was. Oh, it was. It was shocking. And no, I'm worried. Uh, I, I exactly. Think the, I think the mothership has come <laughs> back down and uh, and taken him once again. Uh, apparently, the uh, the results from the anal probing were inconclusive, and they needed to uh, do another round. <laughs> oh my! Uh, so that's unfortunately, Nikki G will not be joining us this week. No, I'm kidding. I'm of course just playing around. But uh, fortunately, I thought about it, and I went, "Oh, speak pipe. Let me check the speak pipe." And sure enough. There it was. So, oh, so we do have yay. a so we do have a Nikki G. But first, we're going to start All off as well in the world. Yes, but first, we're going to start off with a a new voicemail from. Uh, now I heard it as Bubba, which all right. We'll have to have to see what you guys think. But uh, well, anyway, let's get to our voicemails. Hey, this is Tony, and this is Josh from the XJ Talk Show, and Tammy. We want to thank you for calling our twenty four seven voice line. Yes, we do. <laughs> Just leave your first name and your question or comment. There's no guarantee, but we may play your message on the podcast. Oh, and don't worry about keeping it clean. We'll take care of that. Now it's your turn to speak at the beep. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Bubba. Uh, been listening to the show for about three months. I got a 95 Cherokee and I'm completely in love with it and everything cheap I've been for. I uh, just want to say, you know, great job on the show. Really appreciate it. I've learned a lot. But what really made me call in just now, I'm in the car. Hopefully you can hear me. I saw a trail chicken pass me down, <laughs> pass me on the highway. Nice. And before now, I didn't think they were all that bad. <laughs> like, they're a little ugly, but it's nothing crazy. And they have some off-road capability. But holy hell. I just saw this thing pass me on the highway, and it is one of the ugliest things I have ever seen on four wheels. <laughs> I cannot believe this has a Jeep badge on it. It's, just, it's a little ridiculous. But, yeah, on to my next point. Uh, my Jeep is not starting. It's just clicking. I, I want to say it's the NSS. If you've got any thoughts on that, I turn the key, it clicks, battery's good, starter's good. Everything else is good that I know of. Uh, any insight would be much appreciated. Can I ask you a joke? Well, I'm thinking solenoid or the battery is low, and, but he said the yeah, battery is well, good. So it's definitely not the neutral safety switch. If it was the neutral safety switch, you wouldn't even get the click. It just it, wouldn't allow you the, the starter to engage at all. It would be uh, but it sounds like dead. <laughs> yeah, the, it sounds like the starter is trying to engage. You're right, Tony. It might be the solenoid. Uh, Bubba, you might want to have that starter, take that starter off and take it in. There's a lot of auto shops that will test them for free. Just call around and see which one is close to you that will do that. But I would definitely, before you do anything else, double check the posts at the battery. Oh yeah. Take, take a look at the terminals themselves. Make sure they're not corroded. Jeeps are very, very finicky when it comes to voltage and ground. And if you don't have things just pristine and perfect, you're going to start having some problems. 
might start running rough. You might have a, an issue um, with it clicking. Look, when I when I did a, a my very first tune up on my Jeep after I got it, it's one of the very very first things I did. Replace some O2 sensors and a whole bunch of other stuff. I disconnected the battery terminals. Well, when I put them back on, I did even clean them, but I didn't have it cinched down good enough. And the Jeep was exhibiting the exact same symptoms that you're talking about right hmm. now. The dash lights would come on. I could hear the starter click. It just wouldn't happen. As soon as the key would get turned to the start position, lights would go dim. Everything would pretty much just shut off. That's what happens when things aren't just absolutely perfect on the battery. That's why I always stress to you guys to check your battery, check your cables often, and clean off any corrosion if you see it, and double check those, those, uh, those battery cables for any corrosion heading up into the wire. Do that by pinching them, kind of giving them a little bit of a bend back and forth. They should bend back and forth very easily. If they don't and they're very hard or brittle, well, then you know that corrosion is headed up into the insulation and into the wire, and you pretty much have to cut that cancer out until you get back to some good wire or replace the entire thing altogether. Yeah, I'd just replace the whole thing. Those things are notoriously yep. small anyway. They are small. Typically, only about 8-gauge is what you're looking at. I would highly recommend stepping up to 4-gauge or even 2-gauge if you can afford it. And it's a great upgrade for the starter and for the charging system. You're actually going to get a lot more performance out of both systems by upgrading those wires. Really helpful for off-road lights. Tammy, what do you mm -hmm. think? you think it's uh, the battery? or? I think it's a starter. It could be. Um, and, oh, uh, that's another thing. Just come, come to think of it, the 99 was kind of doing that too. Well, actually, the 99 was just acting like it was dead. Sometimes it would start, sometimes it wouldn't. And I took a big-ass old, uh, big -ass hammer and hit it, uh, hit the starter, not the Jeep, uh, with uh, uh, a little small ball-peen hammer and a uh, mini sledge. That's right. And anyway, when I did that, it started right up. So, uh, you, What is it with hammers and guys? Uh, BFH my, <laughs> need a big freaking hammer. Yeah, because it solves anything. Men will make it and fit. duct tape. Yes, my husband uses that's right. Duct tape for everything. Well, and you the put the duct, zip tie. You tuck, you put the duct tape, duct tape around the uh, mini sledge so it doesn't get your uh, hammer all bloody. So there we go. <laughs> anyway, now let's get on to our Nikki G of voicemail. Hey, this is Nikki G, and uh, this week I'm using the speak pipe feature on the website. But the uh, instructions are kind of vague. I didn't really know how to use it. So um, <laughs> I'm using a three-quarter inch lead pipe. And uh, I hope it works out all right. And on a, a similar note, I can't flush my toilet now. <laughs> yeah, you can't go wrong with a potty joke. All right, guys, I'll chat you later. Have a good one. Bye. Oh, Nikki G, man. You never disappoint, buddy. I <laughs> love it. You know, absolutely love you, it you don't know where it's going but you have an idea where it's going to turn <laughs> you, you there's usually a pause usually a left turn deep in a the little, left field a little way wink, out there yeah a little <laughs> wink in the eye that you can't see but you know is there <laughs> and then it goes oh man love that guy love that guy <laughs> and uh this is one that we uh we got sent in to us uh it was a uh, you know josh is always talking about not recently so much but josh was uh, uh formerly talking a lot about the third seat uh, That's available right. to all of our listeners because we really enjoy uh, listener involvement. Actually, uh, a listener, uh, Josh was a listener. Tammy was a listener. The only person that wasn't a listener was me. So uh, <laughs> everybody everybody here uh, had an opportunity to be a listener and to be on the show, and, and so do you. And, uh, well, let's listen to this uh, little uh, uh, explanation of the uh, trail chicken, uh, which I think is uh, very good timing considering the uh, the voicemail from Bubba. Hey guys, this is Cody with TrailChasers.net. I was having a conversation with my wife about the new Cherokee and why people are so down on it, and I gave her this analogy. Imagine if you were a huge Dallas Cowboys fan, and you followed the Dallas Cowboys and you worshipped them. And then one day, Jimmy Johnson, the owner of the Dallas Cowboys, says, That's it, I'm pulling the plug. No more Dallas Cowboys. You would be devastated, but you'd say, Hey, they had a good run. I guess there's nothing I can do about it. Ten years later, Jimmy Johnson comes out and says, we're bringing the Dallas Cowboys back. You would be so excited, and you couldn't wait for the first day of football season. And then the first day of football season, guess what? There's no Dallas Cowboys. Why? Because Jimmy Johnson brought the Dallas Cowboys back as a professional badminton team. <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong with badminton, but it ain't the NFL. And if you're going to bring the Cowboys back as a badminton team, call them something else. That's my take on it. I think you guys agree. Keep up the good work. 
<laughs> and again, that was uh, Cody at uh, trailchasers.net. <laughs> oh, man. Cody, nicely done, brother. <laughs> nicely done. No, seriously, that's a, that's a great audio submission. And thank you very much, Cody. Trailchasers.net, guys, great website. You got to go check it out. Very well put together. Uh, they got a blog. They got a whole bunch of trail reviews, everything from uh, Borrego Springs uh, to Moab, Utah, to Big Bear Lake, California, and more. Got to go check out, check it out, trailchasers.net. It's not the same as uh, fattychasers.net. Don't make the mistake. Ooh. And there's, I wonder if trail chicken has been taken yet. Trailchicken.com. Oh, that would be, be kind of cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm going could, there right now. We could get sued for that. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's get on to our uh, newest YouTube subscribers. Well, well, every week, guys, we go ahead and uh, spread around a little bit of that YouTube love. We uh, pay some homage and give a shout out to four of our YouTube subscribers. I was going to say latest, but I know that some of this list is, uh, well, a little bit old. That's because we've got a lot of subscribers and it's going to take a little while to go through with them. Over 840 subscribers and well over 200,000 views on our YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pick four out of the hat. Tony, who's first on the list tonight? Oh, XJ Jake. Yeah, we know that name, and mm -hmm. he's been helping us out a lot with uh, This Week in Jeep Reports and more. So a uh, big thanks to XJ Jake, not only for the subscription, but everything else you do. Mr. Battlewagon. Man, that's a good one. Nice, strong name. Mr. Battlewagon in our second spot. And we have William Pierce, number third spot. Oh, you got to like that one. It almost sounds like a Hollywood Simple name, and easy. It does. Yeah. It does. It does sound good. <laughs> and Mr. Cascade 09 in that list as well. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, guys, now would be a great time to do it. Head over to youtube.com slash xjtalk. Now is the time where we would play our little intro for Wrangler Talk, and it would uh, finish up with, uh, what was it, Tammy? Listen to... It's shut up and listen to yes. Wrangler. Or shut Jeep up Mama. and listen to... Shut up. <laughs> shut up and listen to Jeep Mama. We got to put that... Well, Nikki G. When, yeah, when we do that, that. Oh, maybe we can get Nikki G to record just that that one part, and then we'll put it in the in the intro. Tell you what, here's here's what I want you guys. I'm gonna for everybody who's in the sound of my voice right now. I want you guys to do a little bit of homework. Yeah, I need you to call into the XJ Talk Show. Call our our twenty four seven voicemail line at five three zero six seven five four one zero two, or use our speak pipe feature. And I want you to say those words. Shut up and listen to Jeep Mama. <laughs> I want to put together a little montage of a bunch of our listeners saying those words, and we're going to use it for our next promo, our next, uh, our, our, well, we're going to use it for the intro for this segment, if nothing else. So guys, you have some homework to do. Give that voicemail line a call, and let's hear you say, shut up, listen to Jeep Mama. <laughs> and we're going to do that right now. Here's uh, uh, Tammy Jeep Mama. Um, you know, more and more moms are seen driving Jeep Wranglers these days, and driving the Jeep Wrangler is not like driving just any other vehicle. It's a whole different experience, and there are certain accessories you need to make the driving pleasure complete. So here is my list of the top 10 accessories every Jeep mom, Jeep Wrangler mom, I should say, should have. Um, the first is a hat, because when you put your top down, um, are, and this could go for guys who have long hair. You know, when you're driving with the top down, the wind's going to blow your hair all over. And 99% of the time, your hair is being blown right in front of your face. And that gets quite dangerous when you can't see as you're driving. So a hat is number one. Um, or you could use a scrunchie or a hair tie um, and preferably make it a baseball hat. Because if you have like another kind of floppy hat, the wind can blow it off. So the second thing is sunglasses, because when the top is down, of course, you know, the sun's just a little brighter and shining in your eyes. So you'll need those sunglasses. And plus, you look cool with your sunglasses on. Um, the third thing I like to have are the grab handles. And those are um, on the sides of your door on the roll bar. And I use the EK Motorsports ones. And of course, I bet you can't guess what color my grab handles are. Red. Uh, wrong. <laughs> they, wrong. They've got to be wrong. purple. Am I? Am I right? Purple. Or I, pink, I miss purple. If not thank black. you. Yes. All right. Jeez. Um. Anyway, there for your safety and convenience, and it's also helpful when you're off roading for the passenger to be able to hold on when you're crawling on those rocks. The fourth thing is I upgraded my cup holder, my drink holder in the back seat. Currently, the stock cup holders the Cups are, holders are right next to each other. 
Well, I have one that can insert right over those cup holders and you have a little trash can and then the drink holders are now off to the sides and they're separated. This is very important for moms or for all parents. Now that the drinks are separated, they're not touching each other so your kids won't fight about, <laughs> so Johnny's cup is touching my cup. Um, the next thing is tools. You should have your own toolbox um, your own set of tools. Make sure you keep them locked up because you don't want your husband stealing them or your kids foraging through them. I went downstairs in the basement one day and my son had all my tools spread out all over the basement. So just make sure you lock them. The next are mechanic gloves um, or any type of um, working gloves. This helps keep your hands free from cuts and gives you that extra grip needed when you're wrenching on your Jeep. And the seventh is a recovery kit. And this is especially necessary if you're off-roading. Um, my kit consists of two shackles. Actually, I have four shackles, but two are for decorative purposes. Um, a tow strap, a tree saver, some tools, a hijack lift. But the hijack lift really should only be used if you know what you're doing. And you should be properly trained on it because it can get very dangerous um, using that. Recovery gloves, a shovel, and an axe. And right now I'm working on some other items, possibly a winch, a snatch block, the winch line dampener, and a fire extinguisher. But I think a fire extinguisher is going to be my next um, purchase. And I think I'll buy that on Amazon.com. <coughs> Um, anyway, so be sure you're properly trained on using all that stuff. There's tons of YouTube videos out there um, before you attempt to use any of that stuff. And then my eighth item on the list is music. And you can go to my blog at www.jeepmama.com. And I have a list of my top. It's like about at 85 right now. And I'll be adding to it. But it's going to be my top 100 songs for driving your Jeep with your top down. Now, for me, these are specific songs because it's a different, you know, it's everybody has a different list of songs for different things. And when you drive with your top down, there's a specific type of music that you need to listen to, for me anyway. So um, check out on my blog and you'll see the top 100 songs. And then number nine is colored exterior accessories. Now, moms are all about accessories, whether it's a belt or earrings or whatever. And we need to accessorize our Jeeps as well. So I have plum crazy purple painted grill inserts and I have the matching shackles or D-rings, some people like to call them, um, as my accessories. And there are other tons of other different accessories you can have, but accessories are an important thing for any Jeep Wrangler mom. And last but not least is a Jeep t-shirt. It doesn't matter what kind, but you should have some sort of Jeep t-shirt. I have a Jeep girl t-shirt. I have, I love four by four. I have um, a Jeepaholic shirt. So anyway, that's my top 10. And it, as I posted this today, I keep getting more suggestions so my list might go up to be the top 20 accessories as i get more comments in so tony and josh yeah very easily to do uh, very easy to do uh, the list of accessories that you know top my list boy it'd be hard to narrow it down to 10 so uh, good job on that tammy i'm gonna definitely be curious to see how this list grows over time so yeah guys keep those submissions coming in well, we've got some reviews to share with you guys. Um, if you haven't yet, you need to stop over to iTunes and give us a five-star review. And don't forget to leave us a comment. Those comments we typically read on the show. And we've got one tonight by War Wagon on February 14th of last year. Well, actually, it was a couple years ago. Gave us a five-star rating. I love this podcast. It's always getting better, real information, news tips and how-tos, interviews and more. I can't wait. Only one a week. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of work to put together this show, guys. It'd be hard-pressed to do more than one a week, but uh, we love bringing this to you guys every week, and we love getting those reviews. Whether it's constructive criticism or a little pat on the back, guys, head over to iTunes right now or even Stitcher Radio. You can find us there as well, and leave us a five-star review and a comment. Well, I had a bit of a surprise this, uh, this week. We had uh, uh, XJ Jake, we mentioned uh, earlier in the show, uh, said, uh, I think he sent a message on xjtalk.com chat saying, Hey, a renegade just showed up here at the dealership. And that's right. Uh, he's a, uh, he's a, a car salesman, isn't he? Uh, well, I don't know. I didn't get into any, any personal information, but, uh, he was hanging out <laughs> at the, the car lot for something. He's a groupie. <laughs> uh, he's just, he's just a lot fly likes to hang around. Uh, a lot he fly. Just, he's an addict to that new car smell. 
<laughs> kick him out of those dealerships. He's in there just huffing on the huffing, new seats. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, you got a free on leak. So anyway, uh, the uh, I said, hey, Jake, why don't you uh, you know crank up the tap a talk uh, on your uh, or tape a talk? I'm sorry, I get those two confused. There you go. The tape a talk on your smartphone and record your impressions of the new Renegade. And he also uh, snapped a few pictures that you can see over on xjtalk.com. And uh, you just do a search for Renegade and XJ Jake, and you'll get to see those pictures. And uh, we get a little more traffic over there. But anyway, uh, he put together a, a quick little audio thing for us. And uh, here's XJ Jake talking about the uh, the new Jeep Renegade. Uh, those two words shouldn't go together. <laughs> Hi, guys. This is XJ Jake. Uh, Tony asked me if I would do a review of the new Renegade, and so that's what I am doing. We just received ours at the dealership this morning, and I'm taking my first look at it right now. Uh, first impressions, it uh, it's small. Um, I won't go quite as far to say as it's cute, but it is definitely small. Uh, front of the vehicle, it actually has a pretty, pretty nice look. Um, I like the front of the, the grill, the styling is nice, the air dam is a little much, but uh, it is what it is. Um, the wheels are nice, um, back seat is uh, fairly non-existent, and storage area is very limited in the back. Um, I would say you could maybe get like a 19 gallon storage tote in the back, um, in the storage area, not very much at all. Not much for room back there, but uh, driver's compartment is pretty pretty spacious considering the size. Um, the heat vents on top of the dash are, are a little bit odd, and I will post some pictures um, so you guys can see that. Um, otherwise, all in all, it's, it's not terrible. <laughs> it's not something I'd want parked in my driveway, but it does definitely serve a purpose in the market so back of the vehicle it's a little odd looking the tail lights are interesting the neat thing about this though is that they have willie's grills all over this thing um on the speaker grills in the headlights in the seats in the tail lights um i think they're oh even in the uh rear view mirror pod uh it's it's well thought out it's uh It'll definitely serve a purpose, but uh, I don't know. I think it'll sell well. It's definitely hitting toward a younger market, which I think is what Jeep needs to a point. But I don't know. It, it'll it be interesting to see how it goes. Um, I'll try and post some pictures up, and uh, guys, feel free to ask questions. I'll do what I can to help you out. All right, this is XJ Jake, and uh, that's all for now. Talk to you guys later. <laughs> I think you got a text message while he was yeah, uh, right wrapping up. There. <laughs> well, that was great. It was real interesting. And, and if you guys have been worried about how you would sound by using the Tape Talk app on your uh, smartphone to record an interview for us or uh, comments like this, Man, I thought it sounded great. I love the background noise. Yeah. If you're an audiophile, you really like hearing the little birds chirping and the, mm-hmm. the seat squeaking as he was, because you could just kind of tell he was in the back seat trying to trying to wiggle out of that that <laughs> uh, that toaster. <laughs> yeah, no, that sounded great, guys. And if uh, you want to know how to do that as well, you want to get in on that on that kind of fun as well. Well, all you got to do is download the Tape a Talk app. It's a free app. I think there might be a free or a paid version out there that gives Probably. you a little bit more. Uh, but uh, but it's free app, guys. Uh, go ahead and get that. You can be an XJ Talk Show reporter live on the scene during a show. Um, you maybe got a club run, something like that. Great way to do an interview on the scene about somebody who's got a really cool Jeep, uh, something like that. Uh, maybe you're in your local four wheel parts store, or something like that. Uh, you want to talk to some of the guys? By all means, get that app, and you can submit a little audio segment just like XJ Jake Jake did. And we very much appreciate that. If you guys want to go back to episode 126 of the XJ Talk Show, we list out all the Easter eggs found on the Renegades. You guys can go ahead and compare those, the ones that you found. If you want to go check out that Renegade at your dealership, they should be arriving soon. You know, I'm looking at pictures on, um, online of the Renegade. It looks like a car that some dad would get his like teenage daughter. Yeah, they are applying... 
they're going for a younger and a more global market with the Renegade. Global, that, that was yeah. their that was their plan with that was to be a global Jeep. Now, I, obviously, the uh, the uh, the Wranglers would certainly fill that role, but they're at a much higher price point, and uh, certainly a four door JK might not be the best vehicle to drive around Chinese streets. Mm-hmm. You know, I I don't know, but uh, but the Renegade, however, fits the bill for a global market a lot better than just about any other vehicle in the Jeep lineup. Does that mean I'm a fan of it? Yeah, not so much. But they certainly did the right thing with the vehicle design. Now, with the name of it, <laughs> not so much. Yeah. But uh, kind of goes that's back to that NFL that football team it. thing. Yeah. <laughs> Badminton. <laughs> God, man, that was great. <laughs> Cracked me up. So the thing that it, 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 Jake m- mentioned several times during the uh, the the voice uh, thing that he left us there, the uh, interview, if you want to call it that, uh, that he was going to take some pictures, and he did, and he did post them up on xjtalk.com. And the thing that uh, kind of, I don't know, it kind of, uh, I mean, it, it looked nice, I mean, as a, a new car should, and it looks like it was designed or laid out well. But the thing was, is like like he said, there's these these grills, these Willys grills inset into the headlights. So like in just the center, a very small Willys grill is right there in the middle of the headlight. There, uh, uh, on the a a pillar. If I'm I'm thinking about this from memory. Uh, the a pillar had a little Willys uh, grill emblem on it. It's like all throughout the vehicle. And uh, I think uh, Josh was the, mm-hmm. were those the Easter eggs that you were referring to? Those are that. Well, there's some of the, those are some of them. Okay. Um, it's not all Willys grills, but there are many many Easter. I think there's thirty in total. Wow. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there are 30 little hidden gems in the Renegade. If you guys want to go find them, I highly encourage you. It would be a fun little adventure. Head down to the dealership and, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, make fun of one of the salesmen out there and to get them <laughs> to uh, think that you might buy one and you're just going to pull it apart and investigate it a little bit. But no, seriously, guys, uh, I believe there are 30 Easter eggs. And again, I list them all in episode 126 of the XJ Talk Show. So by all means, head to xjtalkshow.com. And download episode 126 and then take that to the Jeep dealership yourself and see if you can find all 30. <laughs> yeah, please don't talk to me. I'm listening to a talk show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not interested in buying this. No, I'm, just, no. I'm looking for Easter eggs. Leave me alone. So, but yeah. the, the, the thing that struck me was is that it was almost like this isn't really a Jeep. So we're going to stick a lot of Jeep emblems on it so that you'll yeah. think that it is. <laughs> right? they're, they're definitely uh, making up for a little shortcoming, I think. But I will say this. It looks a lot more like a Jeep than the trail chicken does. Well, it's square yeah. and boxy. Come on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So is the Kia Soul and the, uh, the what's that one that... Uh, the toaster that I have downstairs in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> plus, no, of plus the, the it Scion, makes toast. The Scion TC or yeah, the yeah. XB or whatever that is. And uh, the, uh, there's another one that Nissan had. You know, they're all a little square and boxy. It doesn't make them is a it, Jeep, but I see where you're going with that, Tony. Sure. I mean, it which, definitely has some Jeep-esque-ness yeah, to it, yeah. with, especially with the seven-slot grill and, and all that. But, which, uh, uh, which, but yeah, if you guys want to check out some of the pictures that Jake uh, took, all you got to do, head to Google really quick. Do a quick Google search. The, ser- the search term I used was xjtalk.com, comma, renegade, the very first post. You will find those pictures. Which which one was it that has the the gerbils uh, driving the the car? Is that the Zion? Oh, the Kia. Uh, is it, the it a Kia? The Kia? The Kia Soul. Those are hamsters. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The uh, Kia yeah. Soul. So, did you know they're coming out with a Richard Gear model? Oh God. <laughs> oh, okay. Speaking of, it'll jokes, fit anywhere. PG thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> so my son, as I was oh, here we go. Podcast. Um, he heard the your joke about the Henway. And he oh, heard my no. comment about, oh, that's a joke my son would tell. And he was like, oh, no, it's not. And that he didn't even think it was funny. So he he decided he's going to be your joke writer. And Excellent. Wrote, I could use one. He started writing a joke for you. So here's his first one. What oh, God, type of phone do prisoners use? A cell phone. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, he's got his list going for you. Excellent. I mean, I mean I'm sorry. What? What do you call it? Yeah. There you go. Playing along. I'm sorry. <laughs> you ruined the poor kid's this is, joke. This is comedy gold. You're, you guys no, are that, getting that free comedy gold here. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's comedy gold, Jerry. Comedy gold. Oval teen. Why not round teen? Anyway, I'm stealing from Seinfeld now. 
<laughs> yeah, that's great. But uh, Tony's going to leave us and go off and do his own um, stand up. Well, Josh you know, will just be us. You know, it's funny. My uh, my oldest son is actually doing stand up on open mic nights. Uh, really, oh wow! Really surprised me. Yeah, I'm planning on doing an interview with him if I can get him over here and sit down for five minutes. Uh, and, uh, we, uh, we'll have that in the future, probably on the, uh, the Tony and Josh show. But anyway, let's, uh, let's drive up to the campfire and see who's there tonight. Oh, this guy's just driving in my backyard. What the hell? <laughs> well, he, he, your girl gets upset when I drive in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, this is the part of the show where we just sit around the campfire and BS a little bit about some things. And uh, first thing I'd like to go ahead and bring to the campfire is a story about a buddy of mine who's actually, as we speak right this minute, is going through a uh, a bit of an IAC failure, an idle mm. air control valve failure in his Jeep. Um, I've actually, I have his throttle body sitting on my desk at work and he got a, th- uh, a donor throttle body. Uh, from a junkyard earlier this week and uh, and put it in. Well, the problem was that that, that donor throttle body um, had some bad components on it, obviously, and the uh, idle air control valve actually left him stranded. Mm-hmm. And uh, for our live audience, I'm uh, hopefully it'll sit here and focus on it. There we go. Um, that, w- that picture was taken just about five or ten minutes ago. His Jeep on the back of a flatbed trailer. He is uh. well over 150 miles from home. And uh, that uh, bad IAC valve uh, has left him stranded. And it exhibited all kinds of symptoms from running rough to um, cutting out altogether. uh, And then a lot of dieseling and stuff like that. He let it cool down a little bit and it fired back up. He was able to drive it a couple miles and then it dieseled and died again. And now it's completely dead. He uh, went to a auto parts store, grabbed a couple of Torx bits, uh, was able to pull out the IAC motor. And as it came out of the throttle body, the thing just completely grenaded on him so i would say oh, yeah was he injured that uh that is um is is a bad one now what was that tony i said was he injured no no it, <laughs> it wasn't that bad i don't think the i don't think the uh, spring in those is that heavy duty i mean it's enough to push against you know gunk and muck after you know not being clean for two hundred thousand miles or something like that but uh but no, I mean, so what is the IAC, idle air control valve? And, and I just, not, Josh, I was just going to ask you that. I just happened to have one and I'm showing it for the audience. Uh, if oh, you're, wow. uh, very good. Yeah, I had one on my desk, so I grabbed it and pulled it out, the uh, IHC, I mean. So these are, um, these are found uh, more typically in fuel injected vehicles. There is a version of this in carbureted vehicles um, that is called something uh, a little bit different, but um, I think it's called the idle speed control actuator. Now these things go by um, a number of different names, idle air control actuator, idle air control valve, idle air control motor, but they're always IAC um, is, is how people mostly usually refer to them as. Now, what do they do? Well, it's it's a plunger. It's it's a it's a solenoid controlled little plunger that basically controls the amount of uh, of fuel and air at idle. Uh, and uh, and of course, while you're um, you know at a stop and you go to accelerate, this thing makes sure that you don't have to unpress the brake and press the the gas at the exact same time. This gives you the ability to to obviously idle to uh, not stall, if you will, mm-hmm. um, unless you have a, a stick and you don't know how to drive it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it gets its input from the ECU. It in turn, um, you know, does its thing and, uh, and it sits inside of the throttle body itself. If you guys ever pull off the, uh, the intake tube to your uh, throttle body on your four liter engine, you will see it there towards the passenger side. There is a, a little bit of a module and a slit on the inside of the, uh, of the throttle body itself. And that is where it gets all its information from. There's a, I believe a three wire, uh, connector that is hooked up to it. And these things need cleaning every now and again. It's a good idea to pull it out and use uh, not carburetor cleaner. You do not want to use carburetor cleaner, but you do want to use uh, throttle body cleaner on those. It's safe for the sensors like the idle air control valve. Uh, and so this is um, something you want to do every now and again. They do get mucked up. They do affect your performance and they do go out. And when they do, well, they're going to exhibit all sorts of bad problems. You're going to find that dieseling. You're going to find not starting um, hard to start, things like that. And eventually it could leave you stranded. So if you haven't ever done it, you've owned your Jeep for a long time, I would highly recommend pulling the thing out. It's just a couple of Torx bolts, um, on the backside of it. I think they are T25s, if I'm not mistaken, I've had mine out 
um, a couple few times, and uh, I've had them out on various other vehicles as well, and uh, to give them a little bit of a cleaning and stuff like that. Just a nice thing to do every now and again. It's probably one of the simplest hey. things you can do too. Yeah, what hey, do you Josh, got, Tammy? Do, um, like if you took your car, your Jeep, in you know just for you know regular checkups and stuff, mm-hmm. would they take care of it there? That type Most of likely stuff? not. That this isn't even something that would be covered under your typical you know standard thirty thousand or sixty thousand mile maintenance schedule. Um, this is, is considered, uh, you know, a hard part and, and something that would, um, it not be maintained, but would be replaced when it goes out. And, and, but I'm telling you that you can maintain it and prolong the life of it with just a little bit of simple maintenance, um, with some th- a throttle body cleaner and if not, I wouldn't say use a wire brush, but use a stiff nylon bristle brush and, uh, and it will help really clean up the muck and, and grime and build up from dust and everything else that passes through the air filter and dirty fuel and things getting blown back through the uh, the intake manifold and stuff like that. If you ever looked inside of a throttle body that's never been cleaned before, it's pretty nasty. And yeah. so the idle air control valve itself gets all very nasty as well and could use, it could actually absolutely can stand a little bit of cleaning. So um, by all means, guys, grab a set of uh, Torx bolts. There's only two of them. It's on the back of the carburetor. And go ahead and remove that and give it a little bit of a spritz, a little bit of scrub, slam it back in. I guarantee you're going to find a smoother idle. And Tammy, I, I would hazard to say that you probably have 30,000, 40,000 miles to go before you even have to worry about it. Oh, easily. Yeah, I'm only at easily. Like, yeah. So, gosh, what, 15? Not even. No, yeah. no, oh, I'm yeah. not that no, this, high. I'm at that's three, not something, 3,000. Right. So <laughs> it's, it's not, not something you're going to have to worry about Sahara for a while. My Sahara had 15. Yeah, no, I don't think you'll have to worry about this for, for quite a while. Uh, if you're in a, a very dirty environment where there's a lot of dust and stuff, maybe different. Mm-hmm. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this, Josh, you need to be yeah. very careful with the uh, IAC so that you don't damage it because they can yes. be damaged. They can be damaged. You don't want to manhandle it, but uh, they, they can take a little bit of scrubbing and stuff like that, but they are sensitive to other things so you know don't drop it you know do it at your bench or you know squatting down on the ground in the driveway something like that when you spray the throttle body cleaner on it there's going to be some muck that comes off of it and, and out of it and stuff like that so it, it looks like a little bit of a plunger um and uh i mean tony held it up for you guys you mm-hmm. guys can see what those things look like and, and if you're mechanically inclined and uh, uh you're so apt to do so i i do suggest if you've if it's never been done since you've owned your Jeep um, and, and you've got, to, I'd say, at least 60,000, 70,000 yeah. miles on it, it would be time to go ahead and do that. Just to check it. I mean, you can uh, yeah. you can take the, the uh, whatever the contraption is that's on top of the throttle body, uh, put your, again, this is with the Jeep not running with the engine off. Of and, course. And take your finger and push that butterfly opening open. And you can see how the, the throttle body, just do a quick visual inspection, maybe take a flashlight, and just do a, mm-hmm. a visual inspection of how much uh, gunk and grime you have in there. And then, you know, and, and, and to see, well, if it, if it looks like this in the throttle body, the IAH, which is just off to the side, is probably dirty as well. And uh, one of the simplest things you can do, I would actually recommend taking the four bolts out that hold the, the throttle body to the intake and take it over to your bench and then work on everything there. Uh, and, uh, you know, pretty much everybody's got a smartphone, take a picture of it. If it's the first time you've ever done it, I mean, it, it really everything, you, you know, is like, uh, tab a into slot B it's real simple, but take a picture of it, uh, several and make that way you make sure that you get all the positioning of everything back. Right. And it does go a lot faster. So, uh, yeah. anyway. Yeah, this is a, a great thing to do, uh, guys. If you are buying a used Jeep, and uh, especially something like an XJ, it's more than likely going to have well over 100,000 miles on it by now. Um, one of the things to do, along with everything else we've covered, what you, what you should do when, uh, when buying a used Jeep is this, is, is pull that IAC uh, out, give it a clean, as well as cleaning up the throttle body itself. It's always going to uh, you know, help things run a little bit smoother. If you don't want to get stranded, invest in a... Uh, uh a uh, crank position sensor as well. Mm, yeah, while you're in there. <laughs> exactly. So uh, what is happening with this hit and run, Tony? We talked a little bit about your your whole hit and run incident uh, 2.0 coming <laughs> to a little bit of a conclusion last week with the with the insurance company uh, finally awarding you um, some damages yep. and uh, from the damages. Uh, and, uh, and well, uh, the video has been up on YouTube now for several weeks and has been getting a lot of attention. What is happening lately? Well, I would say in the last uh, 12 hours or so, there's been a big bump in uh, the number of views on the uh, Hit and Run uh, 2 
video. You can just go over to uh, XJ Talk on uh, the the YouTube and uh, and watch that. Uh, we played a little bit of the it YouTube. last week. The YouTube. The YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> you kids Christless. in your YouTube. Uh, get off my grass. Whatever the hell you want to do, just get it off my grass. Anyway, uh, so here in the last uh, twelve hours, maybe less. I've been seeing a lot of negative comments, which, you know, that's what you expect anyway. And I think maybe even I made a comment on last week's show that I was really surprised how positive all the statements were. Well, you know, Murphy's Law. You cursed <laughs> yourself. <laughs> so we have some of those negative comments for you here. If there are small children in the room, they should leave now. <laughs> so this first one, and I'll, I'll mention, I don't think any of these names are people's actual names. So, you know, not. keep that in mind whenever you uh, hear, uh, hear some of these, because the, I don't think anybody's brave enough to actually put their name uh, with these comments. So this was uh, like Devon, is it Devos? Uh, you okay. look, you like. look like a douchey driver. Uh, he turned on his signal, so you sped up to prevent him from changing the lanes. He was at fault, but you're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a Richard. I am a Tony. <laughs> so what do you guys think am i a douchey driver no you d absolutely did nothing wrong in that case you maintained your lane you maintained your position you were under no obligation to allow that person to merge now sure uh, they could have looked a little bit better before um uh, making their lane change i would say uh that goes without saying <laughs> i wish i should say but uh, especially in this case uh, because it was pretty much signal and turn and there was no over the shoulder nothing and you how dare you be in their way and Devon I'd recommend watching the video because unless you saw something I didn't that looked like a girl driving not not a man yeah, I was thinking the same thing yeah definitely it was definitely a girl well now, <laughs> I mean, now Tammy so. now Tammy you have a, a feminine uh, perspective uh, was I a dick was I a douchey driver no I oh you come know. on she says no. with hesitation. I know. <laughs> with you a know, little I conviction, please. With, with, and please I was don't hit like me. trying to figure out, you know, I, I just think that when you're on in traffic and you're, you know, some of the people say, you know, you, the left lane is for passing and all that. Mm -hmm. But um, I think, you know, when you're in traffic like that, both the lanes are meant for both things. You know, it's, you know, when you're in town and stuff. So I just think she should have, you know, looked a little more. I personally, I do not <laughs> cut in front of people that quickly um, and that close. I, you know, I'm more cautious. So uh, here's our, here's our next one. This is from, uh, th and then th this might be an actual name, Nega Duck. Do you think that I could be a, an so. actual name? I Probably hope not. not. Uh, I'm hoping that's not a, a rap name. Anyway, uh, she was at fault for sure and shouldn't have run. However, I would argue all day that you should have practiced defensive driving a little more. That collision could have been avoided. It almost looks like you were trying to prove a point by not braking. Well, you were, and you were have every right to do so as a free citizen in this in this world. And uh, like, like I said earlier, you're under no obligation to allow her into your lane. Now, if she would have, you know, kind of nosed in, sped up a little bit, you know, maybe you know, made some eye contact, something like that, then I can see. Okay, you know, she did everything she was supposed to, and yeah, okay, you could have backed off a little bit, not necessarily put on the brakes but let off the gas a little bit, you know, opened up that distance and allowed her in. There was no reason she needed to be in that lane. Well, she needed, so, to, she needed to be somewhere quick. She needed to be somewhere else. Yeah. Well, like, I, I'll say this. I did not see the signaling until I watched the video. Ah. And I don't know if it's the mirror positioning or the eight pillar positioning, or I was just focused on what was going on in front of me and uh, wondering what this person was going to do as she ran up behind uh, these other vehicles going uh, so much faster, but I never noticed the the signal until uh, until watching well, the video. You, you wouldn't have because you were pa at the point where she turned into you. You were past where you would have saw the signal. Well, the, I mean the the dash cam video is is there on the uh, on the, the the window, so it's right. it's a little it's lower sad. than than where my eyes are. So I I, right. I don't know why I didn't see it. I mean, it could have been that I just didn't notice it. it it's not, they're not that bright and it was a bright day. So for oh, whatever reason, no. see, 
I'm looking at the video right now, and at 41 seconds, um, she goes ahead. I'm sorry, about 45 seconds, she puts on the brakes, and uh, 49 seconds, puts on the brakes, and turns, and then begins the turn signal. Oh, okay. she started her lane change before signaling. So I was her probably car was in motion. Yeah, I was probably watching the uh, watching her vehicle, thinking, okay, well, she's going to see me here any moment and correct her mistake, and and. It, 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 the correction well, she never would came. have seen you she would have seen you if she would have turned her head even one right. iota but she did she not were in and her that is, blind spot no please she a was, big red she jeep was in. she yeah, was her in. blind spot was anything yeah. you know aft of 180 degrees the, from her cheekbones the only thing i can figure is is that she was busy with a cell phone or something because she was not watching not checking the mirrors not not turning right. her head and she just signaled and pulled over. And I, seriously, uh, I, I didn't think she was going to come into my lane. I, you, 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 I'm sure it's happened to you guys many times where people start to, to change lanes and then, oh, somebody's there. And then they oh, snap back the over. Uh, <laughs> so uh, well, anyway, let me get to the next one here before we talk this uh, too long. Uh, now, I have no what this is. It looks almost looks like Spicoli. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, Spicoli and then Spai. Now, that one might be real. Uh, did the cop who reviewed the video inform you that you were, in fact, tailgating? You were supposed to uh, maintain remain two seconds minimum behind the vehicle in front of you, and you were like, I have a second. So this is a scientific measurement. Uh, also, you were uh, in the left lane and were not passing, which is not always illegal, but a scumbag thing to do. Also, you pick up speed when she put on her blinker. Uh, you were just as uh, much as fault as she was. So... Um, uh, you know, I mentioned this in the in the YouTube comments. This uh, this highway that's opened recently, they have every major street has an on ramp, so people come into the right hand lane. I mean, it's it's like less than a mile. Everybody's coming in from from one of those streets, and they're uh, merging into those two lanes on that highway, uh, heading south, uh, at forty five to fifty five miles an hour. Now the 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 traffic flow is upwards of 70. So if you want to get out of the left lane and move into the right lane for a quarter mile and then go around the slow traffic as they're trying to merge in and then go back, you will be doing this uh, probably eight or nine times. Nine times. Nine <laughs> times. That's a lot of times. That's a lot of times. Uh, I'd be proud of that many times. But uh, you're so the, the, the simplest thing to do, especially when you're driving this thing daily, and it may not be the right thing to do, is just to stay in the lane where everybody's driving about 70 miles an hour and follow along with the traffic flow. Now, you will on occasion have somebody come up that's trying to do 10, 15, or 20 over the speed limit. I mean, no, I'm sorry, not the speed limit, the traffic flow, which I think this girl, it could be argued that she was at least doing 10 over and maybe 20 over uh, what the traffic flow was. The uh, and by the way, uh, that video it makes everything look kind of slow and still and, and lovely with the blue sky. We were traveling about 70 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. It definitely looks like you weren't going that fast. But I, I would have to say that um, I, would, I would disagree that you sped up, if anything, because it looks as if traffic ahead of you kind of congests a little bit. You can see everybody's uh, distance between the cars kind of decrease a little bit. It looks like traffic was kind of coming to a little bit more of a slower section. And and if anything, you didn't slow down. You just kind of maintained your speed. And by all intents and purposes, the gap between you and what looked like a, a minivan or a Grand Cherokee or something Grand, like that. I think that, it was a Grand Cherokee. Yeah, in front of you. Um, the, uh, the the distance really didn't close all that much. Not like you greatly sped up. The hood didn't raise like you had accelerated. No. You know there was none of that. If, if you didn't you didn't break heavy. You didn't accelerate. There was no dive. There was none of that. It's just yeah a bad set of circumstances. Yeah. And uh, obviously some people out there have some problems with uh, with what they're seeing. And there there's always a, gr a group of those in every bunch. Yeah, and that's fine. I, and I, I'm glad that we that some people jumped in there and uh, we're, we're talking about this. We have something to talk about mm -hmm. tonight. And uh, here's one from Pickpocket. This is nice and short and, and kind of what uh, Tammy was talking about. Left lane is for passing, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and and again, I maintain that I, uh, I'm i not going to go back and forth. Uh, I agree with you uh, on the left lane part, uh, the idiot, not so much me. 
Uh, but uh, the uh, I'm I'm just driving along, maintaining. Not the, all not all roads are are like that though. You can't, you know. I guess when you're out on you know Interstate 95, maybe. But when you're in the city, it's just a little different. Um, I think so, and I think this was a in this situation, everybody would be doing the same thing. And then we have a final one uh, from Ryan Johnson, which actually might be a real name that came in right before showtime. He says, you kind of suck at driving, bro. I, I just never could get into the bro thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Why didn't you proactively avoid the accident? Well, and of course, I've already made mention that I really didn't think she was coming into my lane. I figured she was going to, you know, she's not paying attention to what she's doing. And she's uh, edging just over. Just drifting a little bit. Just kind of, yeah, well, drifting she's, over her. She's, she's definitely coming into the lane. I mean, her intent was clear to me that she was going to be coming into the lane. But I figured it's going to be, oh, let me check. Oh, wow, there's a big red Jeep there with these huge tires that are as big as my head, or twice as big as my head, actually. Uh, and I'll get back over here in my lane. And, hey, maybe I'll slow down and pay attention to what I'm doing. You know, we put the phone down or whatever it is that uh, that she's doing. And that's just not what happened. She just kind of kept coming over. And I, I was surprised. I was very surprised. And I don't know if you guys, uh, if some of you guys with the, the you negative Nellies uh, that are saying these things, if you, if you ever dr have driven in a major metropolitan area, but um, in the in the Houston area, if you don't drive offensively, you're going to wind up being three miles further down the road because everybody and their grandma are going to pull in front of you. Mm -hmm. It's the same here, yeah. too. So, People are going like 80, 85 miles an hour on yeah. the interstate here. So, uh, anyway, as you can well see, uh, there's, uh, some, some really good comments here. I do appreciate, uh, all the, the negative comments because it's, uh, it's nice to hear. Uh, I mean, it's nice to hear another, uh, opinion other than, you know, I, I saw ones that, you know, she was an ass, she, you know, why would she run, uh, yada, yada, yada. So it's good to hear the other side and, and we really appreciate it. So yeah, I just absolutely. wanted to quick tell you guys, uh, remember how I was detained at the border for my, um, prohibited um weapon well, yes oh the pepper spray i ordered my pepper spray on amazon.com by the way hey so very nice i'm i'm good to go so are you gonna go up to the border and throw it at them <laughs> no no i don't need to <laughs> Just put start more unloading attention. on them <laughs> spray it across the, the niagara falls <laughs> Anyway, that's just my little chat for the day. Well, right, we've well, got a review from Tammy coming yeah. up here right now. Uh, she's going to review for us the Drake off-road four-wheel drive shifter knob. Yep, and um, I got the first one for Christmas, and it was for the transfer case, and I loved it so much I bought the other one for just the regular um, automatic shifter. And they're billet aluminum, and they have a black finish they also have um silver and it has a soft rubber tire tread for the hand grip which makes it very comfortable and very easy to grip um it's an easy installation to install them but to take off the transfer case the stock transfer case shifter knob is takes quite a bit of oomph to get it off and if you want to see that install you can go to my youtube page um the jeep mama and i have a little video of the transfer case shifter knob install um, but they're very tough and durable and they're pretty lightweight they're eight ounces and it, they're 29.99 each and they look awesome in my jeep and i recommend them for anybody i just think they're really cool looking and they're very sturdy and they just look they just look really awesome yeah, they do look really cool. And I just posted a link up in the live chat over at xjtalkshow.com for our live viewers and for those who'd like to go and check this out later. Uh, the link is in that chat segment right there. Uh, you guys can check out what that thing looks like and uh, find it on amazon.com. If you decide to purchase that, we encourage you guys to click on our link at xjtalkshow.com or xjtalk.com. You'll find the Amazon link there at the homepage. Doing so will take you to Amazon. Uh, but we'll get a little bit of credit for your purchase. You're not going to spend a dime more, but we will get a little bit of a kickback from each of your purchases uh, from clicking on that link over at xjtalk.com or xjtalkshow.com. So I'd go one step further. I'd make your homepage the XJ Talk Show. So every time you start Ooh. up your browser, you just click on amazon.com and then go to any site you want to go to. 
and you'll you'll make sure that you any purchase you make on Amazon.com for the next 24 hours, so we get credit for. I like that idea, Josh. I, yeah, I, I like that idea too. That Good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, let's move on to uh, Wheeling Wear. Yeah, we're another uh, segment that we are going to be developing a uh, intro and a promo for here very soon. So uh, until then, guys, Wheel and Wear. This is where we talk about what events are coming up in your neck of the woods and around the rest of the nation. What's happening now is the Crawl for, Crawl for Christ happening July 2nd through the 4th in Disney, Oklahoma. For more information on this event, head to crawlforchrist.com. Looks like a very cool family-friendly event, guys. Go check it out. Uh, also happening uh, May 2nd, We Rock presents Dirt Riot Endurance Racing Southeast Section. Uh, Family-friendly activities, wheeling, food, entertainment, and even a raffle. Uh, this is happening, like I said, May 2nd, Gray Rock ORV Park in Old Mount Olive Road, Gardendale, Alabama. For more information, head to WeRockLive.com. We That's rock. it for this week, guys. Yeah, exactly. We do rock. That's it for this week, guys. If you got an event coming up in your area, please let us know. We want to get the word out for you, whether it's a show and shine, a cruise in, a club run, even a fundraiser or a huge event like the Easter Jeep Safari. Let us know by giving us a call or sending us an email to newstips at xjtalkshow.com. Tammy, I know people are looking for you. Where can they find you? She's over there. I guess so. Oh, we lost there. Tammy. There's no audio, oh, Tammy. Geez. Are you oh. muted? Somebody's muting her. <laughs> well, we get her back, sorry, guys. Sorry, no, she... sorry. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> it looked very interesting what you were saying. Uh, I have to tell you, I it forgot. looked very interesting. I was typing, so I don't want to hear me typing. So, But you can find me at www.jeepmama.com. Excellent. And uh, you really need to check out her blog. She's got a lot of great pictures, and uh, it's mm-hmm. all new to her. So she has this, this huge uh, uh, wide-eyed optimism about this whole jeeping thing and it's it's a lot of fun it's uh, it's good to remember uh those times before people started talking bad about you on youtube <laughs> yeah, speaking, oh, of YouTube, sure make sure you guys, speaking of youtube make sure you guys are subscribing to our channel youtube.com slash xj talk we're also on the facebook as tony might say facebook.com slash xj talk dot page and we are on the twitter at <laughs> xj talk Make sure you guys include us in some of your other tweets using the hashtag, hashtag XJ Talk Show. We encourage you guys to also to give us a call. We love hearing from you guys, just like Nikki G does every single week. Love that guy. 530-675-4102. It's a 24-7 voicemail line. Guys, nobody will ever answer that phone. So you're for your three sheets to the wind at 3 o'clock in the morning. You got three minutes. Leave us a very interesting <laughs> message, and we would love to hear it. <laughs> So, Tammy, I don't know if we even talked about this. You did a little uh, April Fool's uh, post on uh, Google+, Plus, maybe on your uh, your blog, and you mm-hmm. had a lot of people going on that, didn't you? Yeah, oh, they, I, like, surprised. I did. <laughs> I told them I was selling my Jeep, or I had to sell my Jeep because <gasps> my, my family didn't want to Nobody wanted to go off-road with, with her, which is true. <laughs> well, you guys can take us off-roading with you every week. Please join us next week for a live recording of the XJ Talk Show, Thursdays, 10 p.m. Central. Have a great Hi, Jeep everyone. week. You know, everybody waved at the start of the show. Uh, Tammy was a, I little, was a little late. She was a little late, but everybody waved. It was a it was an almost perfect show. If I had just, oh, earlier I coughed and I was muting, I thought I was muting me, but I was actually <laughs> muting Tammy. Oh, boy. I got the wrong buttons. It was one of those emergency coughs. Anyway, you guys have a great night. We'll see you later.